Hey everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. My name is Sriram and this video is part 5 of the Pac-Man game dev series where we recreate the famous arcade game. If you haven't watched parts 1 to 4, then click on the card up here. And just a reminder, if you are stuck during any part or video, you can head over to the downloadable files link in the description box below, download just the file that you need, and then continue. Today, we will be teaching the Red Ghost, which is sometimes called Inky, to follow the path that we had programmed in part 4. The path updates real time, and this allows the ghost to follow the Pac-Man during every tick of the game. With that said, let's get right into the code. Alright, I mentioned earlier that stamping and drawing in the screen was for debugging and cosmetic purposes only. Given that we know the grid is set up correctly and the pathway arrows work, we can now clean everything up. First, go to the grid sprite and throw out that one lingering line of code. I'm not sure why I didn't notice it before, but that is totally unnecessary. Also, chuck out the erase all and the stamping during the encode level function. Next, go to the path to Pac-Man sprite and remove the stamp from here too. Before you remove the erase all though, double click to ensure that there are no more pen marks. After this, throw it out too. Great, now go to the Pac-Man. We programmed a bunch of super useful functions in the previous parts and we can reuse almost all of them in the ghost. Drag and drop the functions get tile at x, y, position at index, go to tile x, tile y, test next tile, and test movement. Also, drag and drop the repeat until loop as most of this can be used again. Perfect, your ghost sprite should be a complete mess, so clean everything up. I don't quite like having everything in one column, so I will rearrange the scripts to the following manner. Once this is as per your convenience, create a custom block called get next direction, making sure to run without screen refresh. Here, get tile at current x and current y position. Then check if the tile is greater than minus 1. If yes, set door to tile plus 180. This block is fairly simple. Hash has a value of less than 1. So this condition is met as long as the ghost is not on a wall. Remember in part 4 that we stored all the directions to the Pac-Man in the grid itself. So the tile variable at this instance contains a direction for the ghost to follow. However, the direction is away from the Pac-Man, not towards it. To move towards the Pac-Man, we would just need to flip the directions. If direction is upward, then we move downward. If the direction is left, we move right and so on. Adding 180 to the direction accomplishes exactly this. At this point, we must be very careful. Now, the door variable no longer contains a value that is only from 0 to 360 and can also be much more than that. Therefore, the test movement script is basically useless. But not to worry, it is a quick fix. Instead of checking if dir is a given number, what we do instead is replace it in every single condition with dir mod 360. This will bring the number back within the 0 to 360 range and allow us to continue using the same scripts. Another thing that we must change is the condition of test next style. The barrier works as a wall for the Pac-Man, though not for the ghost. Simply remove that condition and just ensure that level is not touched. Okay, now everything we duplicated is ready. Create a custom block called follow path to Pac-Man with slow having an input of slow. Since this will be an animation, do not run without screen refresh. Let's define it. First, get the next direction. Then, test movement. 
modify the duplicated code to get the can move is yes if condition. If this is true, then it means that the next tile is vacant. We could directly program the main case, but I'd prefer to do the portal exceptions first. Point in direction door and then use the blocks after change direction, that is the get tile block. The rest of the exception is the same thing. Just like the Pac-Man, the ghost will also teleport across the left and right ends. That's it. The main case is similar to the Pac-Man, but we do have to make a few changes. The slow input of the function will input how slowly the ghost will move. Rather than repeating until c is a fixed value, repeat until c is equal to slow. Similarly, each time, move tile width divided by slow steps. Technically, this should be slow plus one, but the test movement function will fix this either way. Anyway, the slow variable kind of works in reverse. The greater the value inputted, the slower the ghost will move. The smaller the input, the faster the movement. At this point, the costume should remain, so you can throw out the entire costume change code. Also, the game over variable will switch in the sprite itself, so rather than checking if game over becomes yes, check if touching Pac-Man. Great, that concludes this function. Create another custom block called chase code, no run without screen refresh needed. I'm creating this as a separate block so that it's easier to run scripts during different game modes. There is a normal mode where the ghost just roams around, there is a chase mode where the ghost goes after the Pac-Man, and there is a frightened mode where the Pac-Man can kill the ghost. Great. Within the block, switch costume to red. If distance to the Pac-Man is less than tile width, or if the Pac-Man is touched, then set game over to yes. Otherwise, follow the Pac-Man with a slow value of 11. Almost there, just two scripts left. First of all, when the init grid message is received, set rotation style to do not rotate and then hide. The ghosts always remain uptight, so we don't want them to point sideways when the direction changes. Following this, we can use the size trick. Set it to tile width minus one divided by 20 multiplied by 100%. This ensures that the ghost is slightly smaller than the width of each tile. Lastly, switch costume to red. Just to remind you, while this sprite contains all the costumes, it will only contain the code for the red ghost. For the others, we will duplicate the sprite and then make relatively minor changes. Perfect. The last event is start game. First, show, then go to front layer and go backward one layer. This is to position the ghost below the Pac-Man. The starting position of the ghost is inside the prison, so go to tile 9,9. .9. After this, get next direction, then point in direction duh. Fairly straightforward, and we can reuse the repeat until block as this script will run until the game has ended. Each time, use the chase code function. This is of course just for the moment. The script within this loop will get drastically more complex, but we will cross that bridge when we come to it. For now, this is all you will need to apply for the pathfinding algorithm. Test the code and look at that ghost. This is so cool, it literally follows the Pac-Man wherever he goes. And bam, when the ghost reaches the target, the game ends. This is wonderful progress and already you should see signs of the game coming to life. If you enjoyed this video then please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching and I will see you in part 6.